And so today I um, um, this talk investigates the tragic um, software incidents and the cultural recessions and resilience through the K-pop cultures. And concerning the political and social dispositions implicated in the collective trauma um, of the software incidents and its commemoration and the collective political um, effects may have transformed into a popular and metaphorical and symbolic representations in K-pop um, cultures. So uh, through close um, textual anal analysis of K-pop music videos during the software incidents, um, this try to map out the political and effective layers of K-pop as a critical space. So software incidents that happened in April 16, 2014, killing more than 300 people, mostly high school students, gave highly indelible social cultural trauma to Korean society. So um, before talking about these um, perspectives of um, software incidents and the K-pop reactions to it, I'd like to address some analogical questions both as a Korean citizen and a human being to witness these traumatic um, tragedies. So in the beginning of the Spectres of Knox, the, the reader is one of my favorite um, writings, the very last writings on the connections between the death of communism and the fate of Marxism. He interrogates these questions. If someone comes forward and says, I'd like to learn to live finally, and then this meaning of finally continuously lingering in my mind, and then, what is this meaning of finally? What is this meaning of living and learning to live? So if I can change and appropriate the meaning of life and death in relation to these tragic celebrary incidents, uh, perhaps my question would be, who can learn from, learn to live and from whom? And will we ever know how to live properly from this trauma? And more importantly, what does the meaning of learn to live? And simply saying, to live is not just something one can learn or not from oneself automatically, not learn from life, or taught by life, to live is something that one only learns from the others and from death. So internally and externally, this might be a heterodidactics between life and death. So in this talk, I'd like to address the meaning of living in contemporary Korea after the software incidents and the post-memory in the walk of popular cultural forms, the very meaning that a lot of people would think it as being in an opposite spectrum of the discourses, perhaps. So as a media um, historian and culture studies scholar, I'd like to dedicate myself to teach and transcend this specific meaning of a sovereignty under the Balkan regimes on how to not forget as a technology of living behind this death in contemporary Korean society. So it's very difficult to say the meaning of contemporaneity after the failure of regime changes and back in 2012, the social moves and the rhetoric of the everyday life has been overshadowed in neoliberal South Korean societies. And then these incidents happen. So the self very disaster happened in April 16, 2014. Mostly high school students on the school trips from their um, way to Jeju Island. It is seen as a disaster that resulted from the combination of the government's lack of effort, eluding responsibility, and mishandling of a very preventable disaster. The disaster created an outrage in South Korea and created a demand for special investigative law of the disaster to reveal and bring to justice parties that are responsible for the sequence that led to drowning of the ferry itself. So this demand, however, was met with another disappointing responses from the government as it was mis misrepresented and misportrayed in the effort to shift the blames to even the family of the victims and to suppress the protest in 1914 until now. So in this meeting, in April 16, 2014, the time the concept of majority in South Korea has stopped, as what this mother said. So what is the meaning of contemporaneity in this context as a group of collective people who share this specific trauma in the post-cellular instance in South Korea? The protest of the citizen took the very visible form of hunger strikes by the family of the victims alongside the movements by the Korean um, abroad, mostly mothers, not only to raise the funds for the victim families, but also the awareness of these callous reactions to the government, re government regarding this disaster. So nevertheless, even after two years have passed, the pain and the trauma of the disaster do not seem to have gone completely, completely away and still continue to linger 
and the collective memory and consciousness. This is actual um, footage of unpublished uh, video clips from the remnants of uh, the victim's smartphone. The circulations of the video especially gave the collective anxiety and trauma of the Koreans that the students, as a Korean citizens, cannot be protected by the government, which resulted in the indelible feeling of insecurity and mass trauma among Korean peoples. So these images left us with a very poignant last moment of celebrating right before the ship is sinking into the abyss. The weight of the disaster and the heavy lingering after effect in the society and its consciousness have been the subject of various observations of um, Korean scholars and many other um, art uh, movements and the media cultures as well. The sulfur disaster has created a pervasive sense of empathy of the suffering and anger directed to the government strong enough to create a moment that is very much pivotal to democracy where emotions in fact come to the forefront as a source of ideas for the awakening of strong sensibility and strong solidarity to question the role of government and the meaning of governmentality. The Selfware incident was the signpost for most of the Koreans to rethink about the meaning of contemporary, contemporary and the meaning of contemporaneity and the modernity itself and everyday life that they took for granted for a long time. The search for the truth, the search for the lost track of time is always concluded as a search for a truth. But then, this specific truth is not to be found by affinity nor by goodwill, but betrayed by involuntary signs, many other uh, public culture signs. There are signs that force us to conceive this specific lost time and space. So this disjointed time of losing children was a passage of excruciating time for all of us to endure. It is also the annihilation of what was human beings and the alteration of what, is, what it means to be a human being. I'm also reminded um, of some of the uh, seven questions posted by Judy Butler in Precarious Life, actually, a collection of essays written in response to the war in Iraq. She draws on the argument's notions of bare life, asking us to consider who counts as a human, whose life counts as lives, and finally, what makes for a grievable life. Although coming out of a different context, software incidents and its cultural imaginations in K-pop may ask us to look at these questions in relation to the historical and political context of Korea. Perhaps that's why the popular media culture is a revelation to see and show us again about the software incidents with images and personals and family memories as a post-memory. I will discuss these metaphors, materials, and media K-pop artists have used to explore, um, explore the personal and fami family memories that constitute imaginative interventions in the larger public sphere of Korean societies. <clears throat> to interpret these fragments of unknown narratives, personal memories, and conflicting versions of the history as K-pop revisits and renew the past, the traumatic past. So for their unknown faces like this, their no longer existing faces that are continuously reborn in a pure state that signals absences and losses. I will try to rebuild, reconnect, and bring back to life to these unknown victims in the popular narrative of um, Kepa Poyesi's um, 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 analysis. So the sign of the affection, the lingering of the past and present, the appearing to the surface, the moment of velocity in life and the subsequent disappearing into the abyss, these whole like tragic signs that gave us the pain of witnessing and constituting the signs of the time lost forever. The moment of cultural interpretations in relation to self welfare incidents show us the involuntary recollections and ambivalence that sometimes take the sharp turns to pain instead of continuing in reminiscence. It is suffice to say that the present sensation sets its materiality of culture and gives a sense of irreparable loss as a present sensation, the strange contradictions of survival and of nothingness. So we must experience these specific violent effects of the signs, and then the mind must be forced to seek the signs' um, meaning itself. So uh, the various music videos about the software incidents, the ideas of uh, memory and trauma, appear in several signs, such as uh, desires, imaginations of life and death, as a departure and ending, lost in disjointed time and space, repressions and reappearances, um, absences and losses, 
the discovery of this kind of science by the audiences and consumers of the K-pop, whether it is voluntary or not, gives a meaning to science that remains significant and effective comprehension of our repetitive trauma and memory that will perpetuate as a cultural mirror of contemporary Korean society. So we need to think about the importance of a multitude of struggles between various groups that were involved and surfaced in the aftermath of the self-care incidents that include the struggles between dominant and subordinate groups and between various class sectors fighting for um, control in the society. In South Korean circumstances, the liberals and conservative hegemony um, groups struggled around the issues of the truth of Seoul Ferry. And the same struggles also happen between the wide ranges of the dominant and subordinate groups in online and offline communities. On the one hand, this struggle of ideology surrounding the Seoul Ferry incidents and the meaning of the basic rights to life under the Bakuna regimes mobilize the sentiments, affections, and belief to induce consent centered upon certain dominant core assumptions about social life, such as a freedom of speech, value of individualism, and family, and so on. But these are core assumptions or so-called common sense of the societies are deployed by the government, whereby groups, politics, forces within the struggle tend to deploy the discourses of democracy, freedom, and rights to life, which they inflect um, according to their own ideological agendas and purposes. Mm -hmm. Just like this, they just like blaming the victims by the government. And some of the, the ultra right wing commonalities kind of like made, made during this time like through the Ilbe communities. So the butlers back in, um, points to ways in which this specific official media and historical narrative in relation to the uh, post 9 11 in the US have been used to. Um, achieve the hegemonic consensus to control the ways in which people to see, how they hear, what they see. So here, however, the popular imaginations through the K-pop um, you know, interpretations among the audiences, and they refigure the official things that they have not been admissible as well as to attempt to see beyond the boundaries of circumscribed or hegemonic public spheres that have hidden or forgotten or ungrievable lives. The software incidents triggered by perpetuating mornings and trauma of the tragedy is positioning us as a collective witness of the death on nationwide televisions. This positionality as witnesses has created and imposed upon us the chemical synthesis of indelible memories and unconscious of this guilty as those who survives. Then how have the popular imagery and its representation produced and remembered the discourses of celebrated incidents. And how has it borne a specific politics of the urbanities and making an inclusions and exclusions and subsequently become a certain form of revelations in the contemporary need in South Korea? Perhaps we have to look at the media cultures as well as political discourses on self-care incidents that helps establishing the hegemony of specific cultural resilience and commemorations. The K-pop cultures produces representation that attempts to induce consent to certain political positions and getting members of the society to see a specific moments that had been concealed, censored, and normalized by the government. Therefore, I'd like to argue that symbolic um, forms of media culture contains discourses and figures, concepts and images, and political positions with symbolic forms in K-pop music videos from 1914 to 1916s. So, in 1914, the, the, the Korean public singer Gyun Sang, if you want to console me, so like he actually proposed this like uh, just position in between uh, the, the survivors as a spectators and then victimized. And then being a spectator of the calamities taking place in self care incidents is kind of like quintessential modern experiences for Koreans who, sent through, who went through the two consecutive conservative political atmospheres. So during the time, the news framing right after the incidents happened, they're continuously trying to media framing about like we need to overcome this sorrow and the angerness. And then they even like misreport about these issues that like the, most of the, the 338 um, Dana High School students are all survived. And even like Bakane herself, the President Bakane herself is actually talking that, uh, saying that uh, by um, close investigations, we need to ask who is responsible for these tragic events. So which means that even 
like government is not even like responsible for this specific tragedy. <clears throat> so this tragedy and its media coverage during the incidents became uncanny spectacles running through the venerable guidelines of the news and 24 hours, you know, headline news shows to which the risk, which the response is compassion or indignations or titillations as each misery heaves into views. So in that era, in 2014, um, the main other question is how to respond to and deal with the increasing flow of information about these agonies of self fairy is also a kind of like a really important issue during the 1914 media coverages. And perhaps this music video is the first reverberations, cultural reverberations in relation to these spectatorships and victimized. So this song itself is actually showing the specific spectacles of others and how to deal with these specific pains of the others as the spectators and as the survivors. So um, in this music video, you may um, recognize this actress, Yoon Jin Sung. She's a, a very familiar actress in um, Old Boys in Bak Chang Park. So right before she actually jumped into the, the rivers, she committed suicide. She actually taken her photos and saying, <coughs> Please remember. So um, the Yoon Sung's music videos, um, in the second verse, he actually talking about the really um, the, the, the direct criticisms to the authority, to the governments. Someone who had everything has too much to lose. The sadness of losing word, which is the victim's families, is nothing significant to them than is the authority or the government. So this specific monologue in the beginning of the second verse of the songs is infiltrates the primal guilty of the survivors and or the audiences who are witnessing the entire tragedy um, incidents on the screen, on the nationwide televisions. So perhaps we have to think about these uh, notions of Dominic Lacapra's um, historical traumas, that he appropriate this concept of loss has potential to be shown as a certain discourses on self-fair incidents. For example, these ideas of loss is actually like, you know, we can think about the, the, the death of lovers or memories of the Holocaust or this kind of like a mass massacre of the self-fair incidents. So uh, Lacapra actually proposed that to overcome this historical trauma, um, we need to we need a time to proper mourning process and to commemorate the traumatic events properly. So um, think about uh, 2014, right after the ceremony incidents were happening, and the people, the media coverage, and the government continuously talking that like we need to overcome, we need to overcome. We don't have a proper moment of a uh, mourning process at that times. And then perhaps this song itself is actually. Um, talking and reverberating about this proper moment of commemorations and time to mourn the loss, as you may see in the verse that I just like highlight in here. Please leave me alone. I lost the whole world just now, and then please leave me, let, let me be crying. And if you want to really console me, so this song is actually talking about um, the specific um, moment of commemorations and mourn of mourning the specific times. <coughs> to recuperate from the loss and trauma. And in 2015, there has, uh, after the one year um, commemorations of the Settle Ferry, there is uh, two music videos. The first one is Art the Light, and then Kim sung Gyu, one of the boy band's groups. Um, the Infinite, um, he released the single albums. So at this time, the K-pop deals with the tragedy in a very personal way, revolving around the themes of love and yearning for familiar reunifications from mother to uh, daughters, or the star to a fan. So this music video is very uh, simple narratives. The arc lights centers on the nuclear family of a single mother and a daughter who have very close relationship with each other, but with uh, no indication of father figures in here. And the daughter died in an accident, and the mother tried to cope with this specific grief by revisiting the happy memory with the daughter. <coughs> the symbolism used in these music videos about the self fair incidents is very much straightforward because this buzz was spurred heavily, but the girl seems very unconscious about these shakes and they keep playing together and joke with each other as if, as you may see in this, uh, the, the actual video clips. So, it, this um, specific like juxtaposition is hauntingly um, echo the images of circulating of this video taken by the students in the final moments. 
And then um, there are another sequence that are, like very much resemble the ways the cell phone incidents were depicted in the media, such as um, uh, all the tables where the mother puts on the food and brings the, the, the daughter like. And then the most striking fact in this music video is that there is a moment when all sound is controlled. And ironically, this cheerful music suddenly stops when the mother is confronted with this tragic news. And then she remembered the very last moment of her daughter. This is kind of like a primer images <clears throat> that was repetitively used throughout the music videos. And the typical sound control technique in the music video amplifies the melodramatic effect in the sequence. But the listening is, if we think that listening is an active process in times and space that moves and resounds and reverberates and the subjects it constitutes in movements and agitation even in silence, therefore this kind of like void of sound, the time when the mother is confronted with her daughter in a fantasy, the silence is not just an absence of sound, but of the essence and the body of the subjects is its origin and end point. And perhaps another striking uh, feature of this music video is the absence of other figures, which is very much prevalent fi uh, figures in Guangdong area through the hunger strikes. <coughs> According to Hannah Arendt, in her concept of faculty of promises, to control over the future is successful due to a particular kind of memory. For Arendt, the faculty of promises is essentially a faculty of memory that has the power to bring a body of people back to their beginning. In this sense, the promise and hope of grieving families represented by the father figures is a reminder that keeps the bonding the group intact and link the individual back to a past from which it began and from which it can begin again. <clears throat> so this is why our end, the promise is not applied to an action from the outside, but that it is in itself an articulation of natality or rebirth from the traumatic past. So in doing so, this specific promise reverses the flow of time. Therefore, instead of being born into an uncertain future, one is born into a secure past. <clears throat> so promises of mourning, either in the media coverage or in reality, is associated with the female maternal figures. So in this diegetic time and space in the light music videos, all father figures are performing their own facultable promises through hunger strikes that evokes the memory of ideal past, the time when their children were still alive and healthy, when only maternal fears shapes in this music video the moral framework of soothing the scars and trauma of the fat past. <clears throat> and then meanwhile, this is another music video that I just talked about, and then which um, is closely related to the symbolic tribute for this um, infinite fans, the Han Seiyang, one of the victims in the Soul Fairy incidents. Um, the overarching narrative of these songs is very um, uh, straightforward, the separations of the brothers and sisters, um, and they hope for the, uh, his sister would return safely. And the interesting thing is during the time, the censorship, the government censorship is so strong. So like the cultural representation of this specific popular music reverberating and like the, the representation of celebrated incidents was strictly prohibited in public media forms. So even the entertainment companies and then the singer himself did not acknowledge that the music video was made with the intention of commemorating the incidents directly. But interestingly, um, the Infinite has a global fan base. So a lot of global fan base actually recognize the Soul Fair incidents through these music videos. <clears throat> so in the beginning of the music video, there is a fishbowl with a sinking female doll with a doll di diver. There's so many like uh, uh, interesting symbols and signs in these music videos. And when, when you closely look at the ball, there is a yellow ribbon in here. And strong sentiments throughout the music video echo the mourning and commemoration of a victims with the hidden yellow ribbons. <clears throat> and the music video itself is actually appropriates the symbolic sequences of, of flowing waters, leaving lights on the dark um, surface, such as like uh, reminiscent of the, the, the cabin, and the symbols that are reminiscent of the rescue efforts and its failure. And then the protagonist enters the room um, where the female uniforms hang in the world. Um, beside the yellow flowers. And um, in this empty room of the missing girls, there is a lot of kind of wishful thinking is actually posted on the wall. The, the clothes I want to wear, the things I want to have, 
the place I want to go. This is clearly juxtaposed with the actual room of the self very victims. All these unfulfilled desires and the words are reminiscent of the room of one of the self very victims, the Tan Seyang. She was also a fervent fan of the boy band Infinite. So in, back into the uh, music video analysis, so the, the, the singer in the next sequence is now holding the fishbowl as if he's preserving all of the girl's unfulfilled wishes. And it's also indications of the Jindo Inn, the wandering around the Jindo areas in here, in, the, in these specific music videos. As you may know, the Jindo is the closest port where the incidents happen and the place where most of the victims found desperately waiting for their sons and uh, daughters um, to come back. So all of these kind of music videos during the 1915, uh, one year after the silver incidents, um, they are actually uh, making a specific personal memories into the popular imagination cultural forms. And the last music video that I'm going to um, provide <coughs> here is um, the very interesting things that like um, this year, um, it was released this year, the One of These Nights, cheerleaded by the Rap Felder from SM Entertainment. It was, it was actually like, like showing the, 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 the perspectives from the ghost. So perhaps this might be the reason um, this music video, uh, the, the whole uh, five members of the Red Velvet look so indifferent, so mechanically soulless now in the music videos. And some of the teasers images in here, there are five girls sitting around in a circle wearing a white robes. And only one girl in the left side, the youngest one, 18 years old, was blurred in the cover as an indication of the death of same-aged high school girls who became victims in the Seoul Ferry. So there is a remnant of victims of Seoul Ferry as an uh, um, archive seems to present a sort of counterway to the differentiality of the symbolized in its realities. <coughs> I'll just skip the, the, the lyric part. And this is the first uh, K-pop music videos that reverberates with Seoul Ferry incidents through the gaze of the victims and the deceased from the ghost perspectives. The prevalent images and symbols in the music videos like yellow papers, um, boats, or the ribbons are frequently represented. And the narrative of the song itself is actually to saturate the subtle meaning of the Korean um, mythological storylines from um, the Korean folk tales, the church is. So I'll just like um, to show you like why this music video is like actually showing a specific cultural representations of the Seoul Ferry incidents and its specific traumatic um, events, um, memorizations, memorializations as a post memories. So this music video, um, as you may see, the girls are standing in the oblique corridors under the flickering lights, which is reminiscent of the, the cabins of the Seoul Ferries. And the youngest girl is actually spying on the other side of the keyhole, which um, she's trying to uh, witness the truth. And her gaze as a peeping tom to camera symbolizes a time when she realized the truth and uh, tries to escape, but realized it was too late because it, it was already blocked by the waters. So this kind of whole cultural representation and symbolic meaning is actually um, um, embedded within the uh, music videos. This is very sequence also indicates that all students could have survived. And this is another kind of pessimist, uh, passive characters symbolized in this music video, Iron. Um, she symbolizes the victims who are obedient to the instructions of the elders and set still in the cabin as asked by the announcement from ship crews. So I'll just like skip this whole part. <coughs> All right. So the music, uh, the, the, this is the antics sequences. The, the video closes with the five girls sitting in the circle with the candles, staring up to the audience, up to the survivors, as if their existence is not toward death, but toward being living on a parasite as a perpetual crisis of life and death in this music video that would identify them as a living presence. So, so far, um, we saw some of the popular imaginations and cultural facts as a sign, and it keeps us to rethink about the traumatic events in personal and social aspects.